Hey everybody, I just wanted to make this intro for this video um, because you may notice when you watch it that um, the instrument is actually completed and um, you might you know, see this and go, whoa, did I miss something here? Um, we're going to actually cover all of, the, all of the steps that got the, the instrument up to that point. What had happened is, if you remember back at the beginning of the series, I had lost a little bit of... Um, footage I believe it was doing the neck blank and stuff like that and uh, I couldn't figure out what the problem was what I thought it was was the SD card so I went out bought a new card and uh, I didn't have a problem with it again up until now um, again I've lost some footage and it just so happens to be the footage that I needed for this video the uh, sanding and polishing the frets um, So I know now that it wasn't the SD card, so you know by process of, of elimination I'm, I'm guessing it was the camera. So I've got, gone out, got a new camera now, and um, hopefully uh, the problem doesn't persist. It shouldn't. I mean, I, I think I've eliminated all the, the, the two only things that it could possibly be, and um, trust me, uh, I was pretty frustrated. So the last camera is, let's just say it's unusable now. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, hopefully that problem is taken care of. So with that being said, what I have done was after I got the the instrument uh, completed, I went back and I actually did those steps again on the instrument, just making sure that I did every single fret consistently, uh, same amount of strokes and everything, um, just so that I didn't screw up the leveling job that I had previously done. So uh, it was just pretty much just re-sanding and rebuffing all of the frets, um, just so that I could show the step uh, for the series. So uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, let's get on to the video. Enjoy. Okay, on to polishing up these frets, getting them looking all purdy and such. Um, there's a couple ways of doing this. Um, there's a certain way that I do it, and I'll go into that in a second, but I want to talk about one of the more common ways of doing this. And that is, um, you'll notice I've taken all of the masking tape off of the off of the fretboard and that's just uh, for the method that I do. Now if you're going to do this method I'm talking about now obviously you're going to either want to retape the fretboard or you're going to want to leave the tape on there from the leveling and crowning. So one of the more common ways is taking sandpaper and wrapping it around your finger you know or a couple of fingers. Uh, some guys will like to actually use a bigger piece here like this and kind of sandwich it between two of their fingers and then wrap it around kind of like this and then run it up and down the fretboard and then they'll, they'll go up through all the successive grits um, up to you know probably thousand or fifteen hundred or whatever um, that's fine to do it that way um, it, it, I, I tend to do it a different way and, and uh, the reason why is if, if you tend to work on all the frets all at once as you go up in grits, you might not get all of the sanding scratches out because you're not really focusing on any specific area. You're just kind of going through each grit or whatever, and it's it's almost like you know you're hoping for the best kind of deal. That's why I like to uh, work on each fret individually as I go down the fretboard. That way, you know, I, I get it done out of the way, and then it's done. I don't have to go back to it and and do anything to it. And by the time I get uh, to the last fret, the entire neck is done and you know the instrument can be strung up and, and generally played at that point. So if you're going to do it the other way, um, I definitely would recommend that you, you keep the fretboard masked off um, regardless of if it's a maple fretboard or, or anything. It's just a good, good idea to protect the actual fretboard at this point if you're going to be doing it that way. If you're doing it um, one at a time, uh, like the way we're going to go uh, show here, I would definitely recommend that you pick up some of these. And these are just they're guards for the um, for the fretboard basically. And it's got a, you can see it's got a slot cut into it, and the fret wire fits perfectly inside of that slot. And these things are indispensable, and they're great because they're cheap, and they last a long time. Like this one here, I believe I've been using this thing for like the past three months, and it still looks brand new. In fact, it looks a little bit shinier than new because of all the sanding and polishing uh, that I've been using it for. Um, so anyways, what we're going to do is we're not going to use any of this paper. This is wet or dry paper. We're not going to use any of it wet just because I don't like getting any kind of moisture on the fretboard. 
I realize that it's ebony and you know it's a very tight poured wood but the you know if any of this moisture gets underneath these frets it could potentially swell it a little bit to the point that it's going to affect the fret it might make the fret actually lift a little bit or because of the swelling of the wood underneath the fret kind of uh, is higher than the rest of them. So we just want to completely avoid putting any kind of water on the fretboard and I've always kind of um, kind of believed in that. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to take our pieces and we're going to fold them up into kind of narrow strips here. And uh, you know I usually like to do it so that I have you know uh, four sections or whatever so I can kind of keep turning the paper and stuff you know and uh, keeping the piece of paper live so to speak. So what we're going to want to do here is, um, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit better here. As you'll see, we've got our fret here with a little bit of blue on, on the center still of the fret. And um, oh, another thing I wanted to note with these things too, if you if you are going to be using these, is to try to pre-bend them to the radius of the fretboard, just because they'll stay stay down easier. And you know, even this one still has a little bit of spring. But uh, it's a lot easier to work on the fret if you, you're not having to hold, you know, hold this thing down so you can actually get at the sides of the fret. So it's just a little bit of a tip. Okay, so what we're going to do is because uh, we're, we're going to start with a 400 grit. And like I said, we're going to use it dry. And we're just going to work back and forth. Now I counted 10 strokes there back and forth. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side too. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to do it once or twice, maybe even three times on the 400 grit because you want to make sure you get all of the, the file um, markings off and uh, you really want to make sure you get at least those off and then if you move step up in the grits going through the sandpaper, uh, the, the scratch removal will be a lot easier and a lot more effective. Um, another thing I wanted to kind of note here, the reason why I do these one at a time is because uh, in my opinion the frets are one of the most crucial areas if, if for the playability of the instrument uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, for one, uh, the, level, the, the level of them obviously is very important. We talked about that you know, in the previous couple of videos. But the other thing is uh, how smooth and how, um, how polished the frets come out. Because the more polished they are, the less friction there's going to be on the, as the string um, is moving on that fret. So, for example, for bending or doing any kind of um, any kind of vibrato or whatnot, um, where the string is actually moving laterally on the fret, um, you've already got friction because of the winds on the fret, on the um, on the strings themselves, and you don't want to add any more friction to that. And so, the, just the smoother the frets are, the smoother the guitar will play. And it, you can even take a crappy guitar and do a good fret job on it. You know, level out the frets and then get them you know to highly highly polished state and it'll play a hundred times better it'll 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 actually feel like it's you know it's a half decent guitar and no matter how crappy it is that you know you'll find if you do that that's probably the the one most important thing you can do to, for a cheap guitar to make it play you know like a, a fairly expensive guitar it works wonders okay so back to this um, I'm going to do my 400 sandpaper now. Here it is. Okay. So I counted 10 strokes on both sides. Now I'm going to do that one more time. Just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Do the same thing here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. And we're going to get rid of that. Now. Another thing you might want to do when you're uh, working with small pieces of sandpaper like this and working up through grits, you want to make sure that the grit is marked on the back of the piece of paper so you don't get them confused. Okay, You want to make sure that you're going you know, from the coarsest to lightest paper consistently throughout this job because if you don't and you get it backwards then one of your frets is going to have scratches all through it and you don't want that. So when I cut this piece uh, I made sure that if I couldn't get a piece that actually had the actual grid on it that I just you know I just marked an, an 8 on this one here you can see it there this just tells me that's my 800 grit so you know another little interesting tip
It's starting to look pretty good. Okay, now from there we have 1000 grit. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to go up to the 1500 here, and this is going to be the last grit that we do. And we're not going to really even worry about doing side per side. We're just going to uh, try and sand the fret, the sand the fret really well with this grit. Um, once we get done this, we're going to move on. We're actually going to polish them with a uh, with a metal polish, and uh, this is going to look um, it'll look pretty good by the time it's done. Okay, so we're polished all up to 1500 grit here, and um, a lot of cheaper guitars, they would stop, this is where they would stop, around 1000 grit, 1500 grit, they just stop and basically ship it out that way. Like I said, it's, the guitar is completely playable this way, but just by polishing these things up, taking the time to actually polish them to a mirror finish, uh, it's going to play so much better. It's just going to feel so much better, um, like I said, especially with the bending and the... And the um, and the vibrato. So uh, we're gonna go and we're gonna get the Dremel with a, um, it's, uh, I believe it's a cloth uh, polishing wheel that's on it and uh, some metal polish and uh, we'll come back and have a look. Okay, so yeah, here's the thing. Uh, my buffing wheel for the Dremel is broken. Uh, the screw is broken off inside the shaft. So. We're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way, with um, a cotton rag and a little bit of elbow grease. So, and we probably won't get the shine out of this that we would with a Dremel, but I mean, we can always go back after the guitar is assembled and repolish the frets. Not a big deal. Um, just have to make a trip to the hardware store or whatever and pick another one up. But for now, we're at least going to get some shine out of them. And uh, for anybody who doesn't have a Dremel, um, this will be a good method for you to, to utilize. Okay, so all I've done is I've put, you can see there's just a little bit of compound on this rag. And I've just uh, balled it up just a little bit. And we're just going to simply work this back and forth. You know, giving it a little bit of muscle and a little bit of elbow grease. Okay, I'm just going to keep polishing here. Look here. Uh, grab us another rag. And we'll just give this a nice little buff here. Making sure to keep turning the dry cloth as you're buffing it up. And as you can see, that's pretty shiny. Hold on, I'm going to get off of the tripod here. Okay, buff this up nice here. And now you can see it's very reflective. You can actually see the reflection of the camera in it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So now we're ready to move on to the next one. Uh, you just keep working your way down the fretboard. And uh, yeah, oh, by the way, uh, I'll show you this, this uh, metal polish that I'm using. Uh, this stuff's great. I used to use it for uh, the wheels on my truck as well. And uh, Oh, the other benefit too of having highly um, polished frets is they don't tend to corrode as quickly either. I mean, eventually the acids from your hands are going to uh, you know, they're going to dull these frets. But, you know, you should get a lot more life out of the frets before any kind of um, oxidization occurs or anything on the frets or whatever or the you know 
it's just the, the more polished it is, the harder it is for um, corrosion to start. It's another good reason to have the molly polished. Anyways, we'll uh, go down and finish the entire fretboard here, and then we will uh, come back and have a look. Okay, we're finally done polishing here, and uh, you can see they're pretty shiny. The camera really doesn't do it much justice, and like I said, when we actually go back and we uh, polish these the next time with the Dremel, um, it'll bring out a little bit more shine than this. So, uh, still looking great, and uh, the important part is there's no scratches or anything in any of the frets. That will interfere with the uh, with playing. Okay, so next we'll be moving on to uh, wet sanding the lacquer and uh, getting that nice and flat, and then polishing that up to a uh, polishing it up to a, a nice shine. Okay, until then, cheers.